Hey guys, so about to start the blue tit. Uh, hoping to give you a few tips here and there, or maybe you can come back at me and give me a few tips. Uh, there's always something to learn. I'm learning all the time. I've only been doing this about three years now. I started at the whole uh, virus start because I had a bit more time on my hands while I wasn't working. Um, and it's sort of snowballed from that. So, I've, I use the parchment paper method. I find it just very versatile. Um, I use, personally, I use a product called Wonderweb. I think it's called Wonder Under uh, in the US. I find it great. It's, it, I have no problems with my sewing machine. I don't, very rarely have gummed up needles. Um, it works really well. Um, you just um, iron this onto the back of your fabric. Uh, I tend to do blocks. So here we go. This is all ironed on. Um, it's great because if you've got a tricky piece to cut round, you can um, trace it onto the back of the paper and easily cut it without having to hold bits on. Um, but the majority of the pieces I will just hold over the top of my fabric and cut round. Um, this pattern, I've designed it so that you can do it in a couple of different ways. You can either cut the whole piece out of one bit of fabric, or you can put a range of values, not range of um, the same value onto in smaller pieces into this whole area. Um, so, so what I've done is I've just, because I didn't think you could probably see it very well, I've just gone over the top of my pattern with a felt tip. You don't need to do that because you'll be able to see quite easily through um, the parchment paper, but I didn't think you'd be able to see from that distance. Um, if you look on, on my colour version, I've basically got four different um, values of yellow. So my first start was to find the four um, values going through my stash. Um, so this is obviously the lightest, so this is the top piece here. Um, so we basically call that number one. Then we've got this middle piece, so that's number two. And then we've got one, we've got number three in here, just a small piece. And then we've got this area, this area, this area, which I would call four. Paint by numbers. Sorry, we're about to be joined by a dog. If you see a dog here, you can probably hear it breathing anyway. Um, so this is my lightest number one fabrics that I found. Uh, I have a, a stash of number twos. This is what I will use in this small area, three, probably just one of those fabrics. I'll choose which one. And for my darker range, we have this lot. So I just went through what I got and tried to match them into the right group. I I, kind of, I do everything by eye. <laughs> um, but if you struggle, the best way to do it is to take a photograph of your um, stash, put it into black and white, and it will show much easier which fabric belongs to which because you'll be able to see it much easier. Um, but I do everything by eye. So, I'll demonstrate what, what, what you can do. So, with number two, you could find a big enough piece of fabric that you want to use. Maybe that, 
and cut it out, that whole piece, out of one piece of fabric. Or you can trace over this whole area onto part another piece of parchment paper, which I've done. a bit quicker, put a bit of tape on it so you don't get it too rough. Okay, so this will fit on here, you see? And then I'm just gonna stick it up here. I think I can stick some stuff very well so it'll easily come off. And then you can cut smaller pieces onto this whole area if I can get it off the back saying how wonderful this stuff is there you go um, I've got a little mini iron here uh, hopefully you can see this is a this is the bit I'm working on and you could go right over the edges Just cut another bit out, demonstrate. So the hardest the hardest bit is peeling the backing off. <laughs> there we go. it down nicely. Put another piece in there. I just cut any old shape. Excuse my computer pinging at me. I'm not gonna, this piece is, um, the texture of it is a bit um, thicker, so I'm going to make sure that I put this piece under all of my others, and that will just hold it, hold it down a bit firmer, so I wouldn't put that piece on the edge. Just do a couple more bits so that I can show you what I do with it next. Right. Any old shape. Trying not to burn myself and do this at the same time is quite tricky. <laughs> Just take off any edges that are not quite presentable. I do like a little bit of bling, but not much of it, just a little bit. Just peel the backing off. The blue tip's gone. I've got to stare at the screen. There we go. Sorry about that. really not very good with this whole video to a lark, so I do apologise, I'm probably staring, probably can't see half the things I'm doing and hopefully I'll get better at it as I do it more, <laughs> if you want me to do it more. <laughs> Each piece. Okay, I'm not worried.
worrying about any of the edges. Just take off any uh, fray bits. There we go, that, just take those off. It does fray, but that kind of adds to the adds to the look of it, I think. You don't want it looking I want it looking like fabric. A lot of a lot of the time people say to me they have to take people right up to close to my work to see that actually it's fabric and then they go, oh, wow. <laughs> Which is a nice compliment, but you do want people to realise what it is. <laughs> got that, that's a bit on the fray side there, so I'm just going to rip that off. So you can see I actually leave the iron on there quite a long time. Stick it down because it was still with the wonder web wonder wonder under whatever um, it will still peel off really nicely so I've started that I'm just going to take it off and show you what I would do once I've covered the whole of it uh, you probably can't see terribly well because it doesn't show up very well. Um, but I can see that I can now cut back round that shape from the back using the edge of the parchment paper. To get that shape right back again. So you can then start to see we're getting that shape back in fairly easily to do. Um, and then once you've covered the whole thing and you've cut your shape back out again, you can just peel it really easily off of the original piece and then you can then Put it back. I can work out where it goes. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Somewhere around here. Where did it go? Well, now I feel really silly. It goes like that. Let me just stick that on so you can see where we're going. don't have to worry too much about your lines. It's going to look fine if you go over a little line here or a little line there or undo a little bit here and a little way. Obviously there's one or two areas that it does matter. More importantly on your, your beaks and your eyes and things you want to try and keep that as accurate as you can. So hopefully that's given you a little start um, and we'll come back with something different tomorrow. <laughs>